Suddenly, the dentist became super sweet and told me to sit on the chair. While he was checking my mouth, he seemed kind of nervous, but he was also saying some jokes to my seven-year-old brother. My brother started laughing, and then what the dentist did almost made my heart drop. He screamed to my brother, Stop laughing or I'll take your brother's teeth out one by one. It, it was, was enough. enough. He, he was a weirdo. And at that point, my dad was furious. He was about to beat up this madman. But thankfully, my mom calmed him down. Being paranoid. Being paranoid. My mom didn't feel comfortable about leaving five-year-old me behind with a weird stranger. I remember clearly that he looked at me in a very weird way that gave me the creeps. Just then, mom asked him if she could use the toilet that was in the room. Oh, sorry, ma'am. This isn't a restroom. It's a room we keep old stuff, he said. Oh. But we could clearly see the restroom sign on the door and even hear the noise of running water that the toilet made. From that moment until the end, the dentist seemed anxious. He was sweating and his hands were shaking. And my mom called her sister to tell her everything about the incident. A week after, my aunt called my mom. Did you see the news? She told us that she saw a dentist who had killed a woman in her late 20s, and he was keeping her in his clinic's bathroom for almost a week. And the place... The place was the same hospital where we had gone before. Shaking her hands, mom turned on the TV. And there he was. It was the same man who had checked my tooth that explained his weird behavior and why he didn't let my mom use the bathroom. A dead body was only a few meters away from me and my family. The dentist was diagnosed with schizophrenia and finally sentenced to death. I'm so glad that my mom didn't go to the bathroom anyway. Two sisters were watching television. The younger sister was still in high school while her older sister was soon to graduate from college. During a commercial break, the younger sister stepped outside to go to the bathroom. After she had finished, she exited the toilet and made her way back into the main room. She recognized the old lady as one of the oldest members of her extended family. She called out to her, but she just stood there in silence. The old lady had this wicked straight face no expression and instantly the surrounding air got colder and colder then her form changed and she became the layak her head separated from her body and began to float forwards its entrails hanging and glistening in the dim light the girl screamed after witnessing this dreadful sight and she ran back into the main room cowering in fear all the members of her family heard her scream and came rushing in to find her through her tears she managed to tell them she had just seen the layak watching to you can i sleep in your room tonight i'm afraid her older sister then replied no you can't sleep in my room tonight not tonight but why she asked Look, you're not a child anymore, his sister snapped back. You should be ashamed of yourself. But sis, no buts. You must sleep in your room by yourself. Don't disturb me. Do not come into my room. That night, the younger sister tried to sleep alone, but she couldn't fall asleep. She was still haunted by the grotesque vision of what she had witnessed outside that night knowing she shouldn't, but unable to help herself, she got up and headed 
to her sister's room, she quietly entered. And being unable to see anything, she turned on the light. This instantly revealed a horrific sight. Her sister's body was sitting lifeless without a head. She stared at the decapitated corpse with disbelief, unable to scream, unable to move. Suddenly, the windows flew open and her sister's head floated into the room. She had become a heinous layer. Freshly returned from feeding on the blood of pregnant women and little children. Then her sister knew that she too would one day bear this curse.